Somebody give that board a hand, clap of praise this morning. Good to see Brother Harold this morning. Go ahead and have a seat. And uh, there are those right now, I believe, uh, uh, just to bring some good news. Uh, uh, Brother Gary Hunsley is, uh, is doing quite a bit better, uh, having had a five bypass surgery uh, over the uh, course of the last couple of weeks. And uh, actually, even right now, I, I don't have the technology. We, we tried to figure out how I could do this to where we could put him on the screen and everybody could see and greet him. Just so you know, he's probably there watching you right now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, if you would, everybody, uh, I should just have everybody come up and wave, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, would you right now, in the, in, in the name of Jesus, would you just uh, give give uh, Brother Gary some well wishes of his wife uh, who's with him right now? Would you just tell him Merry Christmas and we're looking forward to seeing him again so, right now. Give him some Looking forward to seeing you, Gary. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. That's pretty good. You know, I think if we do a little practice, we can get this Merry Christmas right hey, thing right oh, now. She man. says, hey, church, the Hunsies are here. All right. So, yeah. pray. Wait, watch this. Uh, yes. Count those two as attendance, yes. attendance Brother Harold. Yeah. <laughs> and he it, is. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, I just want to share with you this morning. And, uh, yeah, Brother Harold will have you stand by the back door to, to receive an offering yeah. to me. But I want to give something to you before the offering. I mean... When, when I watch how this works. That gives you time to get your offering ready, sure. But um, did you know that, that Jesus came, that God came, that, listen, he, he showed up to do something uh, before you ever even looked to him? Yes. While we were yet sinners, he didn't wait for us to say, you know what? I really need to get my life right. Uh, Jesus, would you come, please? It, it, it doesn't work like that. No. Uh, come on. And sometimes we, we make folks believe, well, you know, you really need to invite Jesus in. To, no, hold on. I heard somebody the other day, and I had to stop them in the middle of the prayer. Um, I was praying with a, with a group of people. And, uh, well, all you need to do, you just need to invite Jesus into your heart. And was, so wait a second. You don't have to invite him, just accept him. Some of your neighbors say, I accept him right now. I accept, I accept the fact that he is, that he was, and he is to come. Amen? Amen. So I want to talk to you this today about Jesus is coming. Amen? Amen. He's coming. And, and, and some people just forget the fact that he's coming, and he's coming again. Yeah. And, and we should be preparing our celebration now, even looking forward to what's going to happen. I mean, if you think about this, if you just for a moment, if we were to go read the account, and next week we will, we'll read the account about how the angel came to Mary, said she was going to be with a child, and she questions, how can this be, and I've not been with a man, in other words, she's a virgin, and uh, she's a, and a matter of fact, she's really young. But the angel, what's this? The angel tells her, this is what's going to happen. The Holy Spirit of God is going to overshadow you. Are you getting all this? Are you taking notes? <laughs> anyway, so my point is this. That when you think about this, and of course, all the things that they go through, and Mary knows what's coming. She's been taught in the way, and she realizes that my child is to be the Messiah. Now, if you and I jump ahead to the book of Isaiah, it says something about that, uh, how... Uh, that, that he was beaten for us. The chastisement of our, our peace was upon him. Could you imagine how that would register in the mind and the heart of this young girl? Could you imagine that? Could you imagine that? Just think about that for a moment. To know that your child being born. I, I mean, it's, it's a great time. The baby's coming. Of course, wait a minute. Uh, ladies, how many, how many had childs, had children's? No. Uh, when you're having that baby, is there anything else on your mind? No. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No. So, shh. hello? Distractions? <laughs> we got to wait for business to be conducted here. Where was I? Oh, I'm back here. We're in the week of Advent. Now, many traditions, there are, there are those, and we've done it in the past, where we do light candles. Amen? Uh, give me that one. We do light candles. And uh, we haven't done it lately, and I probably don't even need a microphone, because most of you can hear me. 
And I want to talk to you this morning about lighting a candle rather than cursing the darkness. Advent is a four-week season, or four-week time be, uh, leading up to Christ Christmas. And I believe it is designed to slow us down. Some of us takes more to slow us down than others. You know anybody like that? Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's designed to slow us down and get us to look, listen, not just looking back, but to start to look forward. To help us to prepare ourselves for Christmas. For what's important. You know, we are to celebrate with enthusiasm. All right, I've been, I've been set free. I think. There we go. Okay. We are to celebrate with enthusiasm. We're not just, see, I've heard some people say, well, I sure would be glad when all these holidays are over. No, not me. I, I, I. You know what's really strange about this, but I, I still hear people in the world, you know, they're looking forward to the weekends because it's time to party. <laughs> but let me, let me kind of tone it down a little bit. We are to celebrate with enthusiasm the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, there's nothing wrong with present buying in particular. There's nothing wrong with, you know, preparing food for a family feast. There's nothing wrong with that for family gatherings. But if we are really going to celebrate Christmas for its intended purpose, we can't neglect Christ. I mean, I, I listen to so many people. Well, you know what? We really need to put Christ back in Christmas. Didn't know he was taken out. <laughs> I didn't either. I never recognized he was taken out. See, Advent was designed to do that for every believer. You have to decide if you will take the time and energy to let it do that for you. Some say, well, you know what? I, I can't slow down because I'm the one that has to prepare the food. I'm the one that has to do this. I'm the one that has to do that. Well, it might be because that's been what your trend. Your, uh, it might be a uh, diet. Oh, boy. Uh, it might be that's what has been your tradition, and you're not allowing people in. Because I can just tell you right now, just to be clear, I, I, um, I have family and friends. Nobody comes into their kitchen. Come on. <laughs> that's a whole other story. And then they complain because nobody's helping them in the kitchen. Sometimes we're our own worst enemy, amen? Yeah. You see, with the Lord's help, say with the Lord's help, the Lord's help, we can experience Christmas in a fresh and a new creative way if we allow God the time to show us and to give us that perspective. Listen, this year, holidays are different. It, I, I'm not going to call it a new normal. I just think what's happening is that we need to, as followers of Christ, as believers in Jesus, that we need to refocus our attention on what really matters the most. Now, I said earlier that I was going to surprise you with something, but let me help you out with something. That message that Jesus died just for you, that's only part of the truth. And if you stop there in your understanding of what God did, just to be clear, did you know that salvation is a work by God for God? Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a work by God for God, for his glory. And as I preached a few weeks ago, God receiving glory through you is good for you. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, Amen. Amen. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, then let's have a discussion. <laughs> You being able to give God glory, to praise him, is good for you. You see, with the Lord's help, we can experience Christmas the way we ought to. Will, will you allow God to do something new in your life? Could you just open up the doors of your heart? Will you give him permission and the time to do what needs to be done? Here's my intended thoughts about the Advent season. First, we see Jesus is coming. Say that with me. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. That's what we celebrate. We're celebrating his birth, but how many know he's coming again? Jesus is coming, and this, this, this coming of Jesus, he is the coming king. He is coming as the Lord. At birth, he was king. At birth, he was Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. So Jesus is Lord. Amen. Here's something else we need to recognize. Jesus is the light of to this dark world. Amen. Yes. This little light of mine. 
I'm gonna let it shine.